Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Jhori and this video is about shell in computers. And we start with the question, what is a shell? We can think of a computer system conceptually built of layers much like an onion bulb. At the core, there is computer hardware which works on machine instructions. Since machine instructions are very difficult to learn and are too basic and tedious to use, the hardware by itself is not of much use. So we have a layer of software called kernel which provides a software interface to the hardware for programs. On top of the kernel, there is a layer of system programs or utilities which provide a higher level interface to the computer. The kernel and the system programs and utilities are collectively known as the operating system of a computer. On top of the operating system, there is a layer of software called shell which provides an interface for human beings to use the computer. There are two types of shells, a graphical user interface or the GUI and the command line interface CLI. In the graphical user interface, we communicate via mouse operations, whereas in the command line interface, we type in commands in text. The command line interface is more exhaustive since we use an English-like language for communication and we can fine-tune the commands to do a particular job in a specific way. Historically, the command line interface was the original interface and as there were advancements in hardware, the graphical user interfaces became common. In today's scenario, the system starts with a graphical user interface and there is a terminal program using which one can use the command line interface shell. Looking back, Bond shell was developed by Stephen Bond and was one of the first shells released in 1979 along with Unix system 7th edition. There were other shells notably C shell developed by Bill Joy which was inspired by the C language and TC shell which is an improved C shell. Then there was Korn shell developed by David Korn which was based on Bond shell and had some features of C shell. And finally we have the definitive shell Bash, originally developed by Brian Fox and first released in June 1989. Bash is born again shell or born again shell. Bash is the default shell and is commonly used in GNU Linux environments. We will be using Bash as our shell in all examples in this video. Executing commands. We can start Bash by clicking on the terminal application. And once we have the terminal window open, we can execute commands in it. Before we do that, a quick overview of the directory structure in GNU Linux. At the top, there is a root represented by forward slash. There are more directories like bin bin, boot, dev, etc, home, live, loss plus found, media, mnt, opt, proc, root, run, sbin, tmp, usr, and var. We are particularly interested in the home directory. It is here that we have directories for users like slash home, slash user1, slash home, slash user2, etc. For user1, the slash home, slash user1 is the home directory. Once a user starts a terminal window, he or she is at the home directory. Now coming back to the commands, there are two types of commands. Commands that are built in the shell and there are commands which can be executed by running an executable file. For example, we can print the present working directory with the built-in command pwd. This prints directory and this case slash home slash user1 is the home directory of user1. We can change directory with another built-in command cd. cd latest gets us into the directory name latest. Most of the time we use shell to execute programs that have been made available to us as part of the operating system or as part of software packages. The executable files may be in different directories like slash bin, slash sbin, slash usr slash bin, etc. How does the shell find 
the file to be executed. The shell has environment variables which have values. One such variable is path. The path may have a value like slash usr slash local bin slash usr slash local slash bin slash usr slash sbin etc. When we type a command which is not a built-in command, the shell looks for the executable file in the directory specified in the path and stops when it finds a match. The shell then forks a process and the fork child process executes the executable file corresponding to the command. Command examples And here are some examples of commands. We can list all the files in the current directory with the ls command. ls ls l list the files in the long format. And if you add the option s, you also get the file size in blocks of 1k bytes. So if you give ls minus ls, you get all the files in the directory. There are a lot of files here. It is here that wildcards are useful. Two wildcards are asterisk and the question mark. Asterisk means zero or more characters. If I say ls minus ls, penguin star, then I get all files starting with penguin. And if I say ls minus ls, penguin hyphen prom star, then I get a list of fewer files. The wildcard question mark means any one character. So if I say ls minus ls penguin hyphen prom hyphen question mark dot jpg, I can zero in on files in which file name is penguin hyphen prom hyphen any character dot jpg. Execution of commands in background. Normally shell waits for a command to complete. However, if you add ampersand at the end of your command, shell returns immediately and the command executes in the background. For example, if I say dot slash long hyphen running hyphen command, shell waits for the long running command to complete. But if I say dot slash long running command ampersand shell returns immediately and long running command executes in the background. Why dot slash long running command and why not just long running command? Now long running command file is in the present working directory. But if you see the value of my environment variable path, the present working directory is not in it. So either I should add dot to path or I can say dot slash long running command which means I am telling the shell to execute the file with the name long running command in the present working directory. Standard input, standard output and standard error files. Any process by default has three file descriptors. One, standard input, which by default is the keyboard. Two, standard output, which is the video display. And three, standard error, which is also the video display. These are open by default and library functions work automatically on the file descriptors. Printf and putchar print on standard output, whereas scanf and getchar take input from the standard input. There are many programs which read from standard input to some processing and give output on standard output. And programs print errors on standard error. The shell provides redirection operators using which we can read from a file instead of standard input and write to a file instead of standard output. So what it means is that although the author of a program designed it to work with standard input and standard output, the user can change it at the time of program execution. The operators are less than for input redirection, greater than for output redirection, greater than, greater than for appending output to a file. For example, the echo command writes the arguments on the standard output. Echo, hello world. We can redirect the output of echo to a file using the greater than redirect operator. Echo, hello world, redirect to F1. Now the output of echo does not come on the video display. The output goes to the file named F1. We can print F1 
using the cat command cat f1. Now cat also reads standard input. So we can ask cat to read standard input and we can redirect standard input from f1. Cat less than operator f1 and no surprises it prints the output of the earlier echo command and we remove the file f1. Now if we run cat cat f1 cat gives the error f1 no such file or directory and we can redirect standard error by saying to greater than file name there should be no space between to and the greater than symbol cat f1 to greater than err now standard error has been redirected to the file err and we can print the file err with cat err and it says cat f1 no such file or directory the append operator just like the redirect operator we have the append operator greater than greater than as the name suggests the append operator appends to a file echo hello world append to f2 cat f2 echo it is a beautiful day append to f2 cat f2 it appends suppose you want the standard output and standard error redirect to the same file cat f2 redirect to f3 2 greater than and 1 cat f3 so f2 has been concatenated at f3 and look at uh, the construct 2 greater than and 1 it means redirect standard error file descriptor 2 to the same place as file descriptor 1 and instead of redirect we can try append and the same ideas apply cat f2 greater than greater than f3 2 greater than and 1 cat f4 greater than greater than f3 2 greater than and 1 cat f3 instead of plain redirect it is appending to file f3 suppose we want to create a file from standard input that is the keyboard and we redirect the output to a file f5 the command is cat greater than f5 now we write some things how do we indicate the end of file Ctrl D signals the end of file so we need to type Ctrl D and our file F5 is ready. Instead of Ctrl D we can use a delimiter in a new line with the syntax less than less than delimiter. Suppose the delimiter is EOF we can write cat less than less than EOF redirect to F6 and we can write some things EOF and we can see the file cat f6 pipes when we do some work on a computer we often use multiple programs we run a program get the output put this output through another program and this repeats two three times we move to the final output in stages suppose we have a file names containing names of people we can print it on a terminal with a cat command cat names now these names have been compiled with some effort but it would be nice if this list is sorted by the last name. So we use the sort command sort minus k to two names and we find that there are a lot of duplicates in this list. So it would be nice to just have one entry per person in the list. What we can do is to store sorted names in a temporary file say t1 and make a new file t2 with a unique command sort minus k to two names redirect to t1 unique t1 redirect to t2 cat t2 now this is nice names are sorted and there is only one entry per person but the output is scrolling away fast so instead of cat I will use the more command more t2 now I can browse the names with ease we have used the following programs cat, sort, unique, more. There is something common between these programs. They all read from standard input, do some processing and write on standard output. Such programs are known as filters. Unix like operating systems provide the pipe mechanism using which you can pipe the standard output of one process to the standard input of another process. So in the previous example, we can write a pipeline like cat names pipe to sort minus k to two pipe to unique pipe to more. 
the standard output of cat becomes the standard input of sort the standard output of sort becomes the standard input of unique and so on this is very compact and we have done away with the temporary files t1 and t2 pipes are very commonly used in shells in unix like environments t command we have seen that in a pipeline individual programs copy the standard input to standard output with some processing so at the beginning of pipeline we have standard input and at the end of pipeline we have standard output suppose you wish to tap the data at some point the t command reads the standard input and writes to standard output and also optionally writes to one or more files so in our previous example we can put a t command to capture output of sort and it looks like this cat names pipe to sort minus k22 pipe to t sorted output pipe to unique pipe to more the pipeline of course works as before but now we have a file sorted output containing the output of sort command history bash keeps a history of commands and we can easily execute a previous command from the history we can see the bash command history with the history command we can see a specific number of last commands for example to see the last 15 commands we can say history 15 we can execute a command by giving exclamation mark followed by command number for example to execute command number 280 we can say exclamation mark 280 that is execute command number 280 this is a shortened for executing the last command and it is double exclamation mark we can also say exclamation mark minus 1 to execute the last command and exclamation mark minus 2 to execute the command before last and so on there's a file dot bash rc in a user's home directory it is used for customization of bash for a user bash executes dot bash rc at the start you can set path environment variable in bash rc for example here the bin directory under the home directory is not a part of path we can set path in dot bash rc to take care of this dollar path is the current value of path and tilde is the shorthand for users home directory and we can include fortune for printing a humorous message at the start we can verify this by creating a new terminal window for bash and a quick look at some commonly used commands from shell the man command shows the manual for a command ls 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 directory listing in long format giving file size in blocks ls minus lst list directory sorted by time of file modification most recent first ls minus lsa shows directory listing includes files with names starting with a period cp file 1 file 2 copy file 1 to file 2 move file 1 to file 2 move or rename file 1 to file 2 rm file remove or delete file rm minus r file remove files recursively if file is a directory remove all files in that directory and also remove the directory cat file concatenate file and print on the standard output wc file count number of lines words and characters in file grab pattern file find lines containing strings that match pattern in file sort file sort the text lines in file head file print the first 10 lines of a file tail file print the last 10 lines of a file diff file 1 file 2 find differences between file 1 and file 2 cmp file 1 file 2 compare file 1 and file 2 print location of the first difference both in diff and cmp if there are no differences no output is shown vi file open file in the vi text editor and we come to the end of this video you can find all this information at https://tinyurl.com/shell7 please subscribe to my channel thanks very much for watching take care and stay safe